it's quite difficult for a historian to sum up the conditions necessary for any complex event. In that way, I think the study of history is quite different from many social sciences, you know, where you build models and think in a kind of more structural way. Historians, we like to accumulate details and in that sense sort of analyze the story that way. But I think of the conditions necessary for the Holocaust as sort of threefold. There are really three things that came together. I often use the comparison of a burning house. For a house to burn down, you need three things. The dry timber, the spark, and the favorable weather. By the dry timber, I mean the pre-existing attitudes about certain people in society. Anti-Semitism, negative attitudes about Roma, stereotypes about people with disabilities. These things were not invented by the Nazis or by Hitler. They had a very long history. But those kinds of attitudes, racism, social Darwinism, sexism, they helped make a society combustible, certain people vulnerable. And that's what I call the dry timber. The second set of things, what I think of as the spark, these are issues that have to do with political leadership. Strange as it is to say, I think it's quite important to note that hatred alone does not result in genocide. Sadly, there's a lot of hatred in this world. What galvanizes or transforms it into action is usually, maybe always, leadership. Political leadership, often from a state or a political movement, an individual or a party. And in the case of the Holocaust, it was Hitler's rise to power, the Nazi party taking over power in Germany that galvanized or lit a spark that took this sort of dry timber and brought it into flames. So that role of will, political will, political leadership, very, very important. Um, it's what I call sort of hatred in power. It's quite different from an individual full of horrible, hateful attitudes to having a government that can harness the educational system, the military, the economy, um, everything behind the goal of destruction. The third thing, what I think of as the sort of favorable weather conditions, that I consider to be the war. In the case of the Holocaust, without the war, the Holocaust would not have happened in the form we know it. About 95% of the approximately 6 million Jews who were murdered by Nazi Germans and their accomplices came from outside of Germany. How did those people come into Nazi hands? Through conquest. The large Polish Jewish population, the Jews of the Soviet Union, of France, of the Netherlands, these were not inside the borders of Germany prior to 1939 or 1941. So war was very, very crucial in bringing target populations into the hands of the killers. The war also served another, I think, really important function. And this is not only the case of the Holocaust. It made killing and destruction normal, part of a sort of terrible everydayness of destruction. Um, so I think those three conditions, the dry timber, the spark, the sort of, you know, favorable weather, not a rainstorm, a light wind, you can think of those as sort of pre-existing prejudices, political leadership, and the war.